What's going on guys, in this one we're going to be searing up some salmon and then putting it alongside a nice little Asian inspired salad, along with a ginger lime and sesame dressing. It's really easy to make, tastes incredible and it's actually good for you. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. Alright guys, to start the prep for this dish, here is one large daikon or Chinese white radish that weighs a total of 750 grams or 1.6 pounds. The first thing that we want to do with this is peel off the skin as it can be quite bitter and if you can't get hold of one of these be sure to check out the substitute list in the description below, however if you do use Daikon it contains a good dosage of vitamin C which is necessary for the growth development and repair of our body's tissues and that's not the tissues that some have been hoarding from the supermarkets. Once peeled we then need to julienne or matchstick cut the Daikon and for this I'm using a mandolin but this can easily be done by hand. If using a mandolin be sure to lock the Daikon in tightly and use a safety guard as these can be very dangerous to work with. I'll also say that this will probably be the first and last time you ever see me using one of these because quite frankly I hate them, as you can see by the struggle that I'm having here. Plus I'd rather have all my fingers for when we eat this. Anyway, once that's done, you should have something that looks like this. Next, grab yourself two large carrots to which we can slice off the tip, saving them for a stock, then proceed by slicing the carrots in half, then slice off a small strip which will allow the carrot to sit comfortably without any movement. Once that's done, slice the carrots into thin, even sized strips, trying your best to get them as even as possible. Then with two or three strips stacked together at a time, thinly slice them into strips, which is otherwise known as julienne or matchstick cuts. And this same process can be used on the daikon if you don't have or want to use a mandolin. Now here is 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of snow peas and with these we need to remove the stems and the string. To do this, simply snap the stem gently and pull down to remove the stringy part which isn't very nice and is hard to chew when eaten and then proceed to thinly slice into the julienne or matchstick cut the same as we did with the carrots. You also have the choice here to cut these as thin or as thick as you'd like to. Moving on with five large red radishes that slice off the nipple or tip and sling it away, then continue by slicing these up as thinly as we can, and like I said earlier, these can be done on a mandolin if you wish to do so. The next ingredient is one long red chilli, which is optional, and if you like a bit of heat, I highly recommend using it. With this, let's slice off the stem, placing it into compost. Slice the chili in half lengthways to reveal the seeds, then using a teaspoon, gently scrape out the seeds, or you can leave them in if you prefer it a little bit hotter, but once clean, lay the chili flat and proceed to thinly slice or julienne the chili the same way we did with the snow peas. Now for the remaining ingredients, we need half a bunch or 15 grams of Thai basil and half a bunch or 15 grams of mint. With both of them, we only want to pick off the leaves and place the stems into compost. For the final ingredient for the salad, here is one bunch or 50 grams of coriander or cilantro. And with this, just give it a rough chop, which can be quite rustic. Just make sure there's no large leaves or stems. So now that that's all done, to a mixing bowl, add in all of the ingredients. And to recap, we've got the shredded daikon, the julienne carrots, the thinly sliced red radishes, the julienne chili, the julienne snow peas, the roughly chopped coriander or cilantro, and both Thai basil and mint leaves, which have been gently picked. Once that's all in, give this a really good mix, ensuring everything is evenly distributed, leaving no chunks of a single ingredient. Then once mixed, this can be placed into the fridge until we're ready to serve. Now for the salad, we're going to need a dressing too. So here is 30 grams or 1.6 ounces of fresh ginger. And to this, let's peel it with a spoon, which in my opinion is the most efficient way to reduce wastage rather than using a peeler, which removes too much of the flesh. Once peeled, this can then be turned into a paste along a fine microplane or grater over a small mixing bowl making sure to scrape it all in there to not waste any of that good stuff. Next, grab two large limes to which we're going to slice in half and squeeze the juice into the bowl with the ginger, either using your hands or a citrus juicer. Proceed by continuously whisking and whilst doing so, slowly pour in one teaspoon or five milliliters of sesame oil for a delicious deep nutty flavor. When that's mixed through, slowly pour in two and a half tablespoons or 50 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil to create an emulsion, which is mixing two or more liquids that usually don't combine, which will then leave us with this delicious ginger lime and sesame dressing, which we can place in the fridge until we're ready to serve. Now for the last part, before we get cooking, we're going to need three skinless salmon fillets with a combined weight of 800 grams or 1.7 pounds, and the only thing needed for these is a nice amount of sea salt flakes, before we can then place a large pan onto our stovetop over a medium high heat, pour in one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of olive oil, and once hot, carefully place in the salmon fillets away from you just so the oil doesn't spit back at you, skin side down if your salmon does have skin on, and lightly sear for three minutes. Three minutes later, we can then flip the salmon over, repeating the same three minute process on the opposite side, and please excuse my hand in the way right now. 
After six minutes in total, we can then remove the salmon from the pan and allow it to rest for 10 minutes. And also I'd usually say be a lot more gentle with this, but it's getting broken up anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you do accidentally break it up. Once the salmon is rested, you should have a medium to medium rare cook on the salmon, which in my opinion is the best way to have it. With this now, we can add it into our prepared salad, breaking it up a little bit. Also the choice is yours if you want to add in the juices that remain on the plate. To this, add in one tablespoon or 15 grams of black sesame seeds for a beautiful contrasting color and a nice pop of flavor, along with the ginger, lime, and sesame dressing to really spruce this up. This can now be given a really good mix, breaking up the salmon pieces, making sure everything is evenly dispersed, and of course, allowing those flavors to become friends. To serve this up, create a nice mound on a plate or in a bowl or however you wish to serve this up, adding in as much or as little as you'd like. Add on some extra salmon pieces around the edges, along with the salmon that's already in the center of our salad, then top it with some Thai basil leaves, a nice amount of coriander or cilantro, and sprinkle over some more black sesame seeds, which then leaves us with this healthy and delicious salad. And to make it all worthwhile, we can then dig in. So there we have it. This recipe right here serves four and can easily be doubled, tripled, and so on, or halved if you wanted to make less. To store it, you can place it in the fridge in an airtight container for up to three days, and obviously being a salad, I don't recommend freezing it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. It really does help my channel out and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe and enjoy.